So this is our topic, our first lesson for the uh, charts chapter three. So we're going to take a look at how to create charts and then we'll create some different types of charts and we'll also take a look at all the different types of chart elements and a bunch of the different skills that you'll be using in your different simulation training exam and your assignments. So you can see here that we have our Excel spreadsheet open and we have a little data set here with some computer job titles the number of jobs in 2016, an estimated number in 2026, the difference, the number of new jobs, the percent growth, and then the median pay and spark lines we'll look at next time. We're going to see how we can create different types of charts and we'll be looking at column, bar, pie charts, and then we'll also look at line charts, clustered column or clustered bar, and combination charts, and then we'll also look at some stacked bar charts. Okay, so the first thing we have to recognize is how do we actually create a chart. So if we go to our insert tab in Excel, we have a section here with recommended charts and then with a whole bunch of different types of charts listed. Now we won't be looking at the pivot chart or the maps in one of your assignments. You will be taking a look at maps. <clears throat> you would have seen that before in chapter seven, I believe it was, but we're not formally going to be doing maps as part of this lesson. If we click on recommended charts, well, the first thing we have is that we recognize there's no recommended charts for, for me because I don't have any data selected. So we have to be careful with that. We do need to select data before we can actually use the recommended charts. If I come over, say, to one of these different charts here, you can see how I come up with a list of them and I can pick one. But again, because I have nothing selected, I have a blank chart. So I'm just going to undo that. So let's select some data and let's select this data here. And now if I go into insert and recommended charts, it's going to come up with a list of different charts that it thinks is reasonable for me. Alternatively, if I come and take a look at, say, a particular type of chart and pick one, it creates a chart automatically for me. I'm going to just undo that. Alternatively, also, if I go to insert and then take a look at <clears throat> the different types of charts here, if I use the little drop down arrow, you can see that I have different types available. Now, if I don't like any of these, then I'm going to have to say maybe play around a little bit and go into the other different categories that I have here. This is one difference with the Mac computers um, under the recommended charts. It doesn't show you all the different types of charts available. So you, you might have to, you know, manually go into the, the different sections. So there's the um, column and bar charts. There's the line, different types of line charts. There's the pie charts, 2D, 3D, and something called a donut. Here's a tree map and a sunburst. We won't be covering those. Here's histograms and box and whiskers. Again, we won't be covering those. You might cover those if you take a statistics course. Then we have some scatter plots and bubble charts. Again, you know, these would be uh, beyond the scope of our particular course. And then we have some specialized waterfall funnel stock, stock and surface charts. And then finally down here, these are going to be our combo charts. So we will be taking a look at combo charts, typically this one in the middle with a clustered column with the line on the secondary axis. And notice in Excel again, when you hover over something, it does give you a name. So recognize that, you know, you might have to come into and pick the different type of chart based on whatever instructions your booklet gave you. Now, something else that a Mac does not have, uh, You've seen in some of my different other lessons that were done on a PC that when I have data selected, I have a quick analysis tool that comes up at the bottom right of the selection that is not available in a Mac computer. So you are restricted to going to the insert and picking one of your charts. Now, if I select a chart down here, I'll select the column chart, you'll see that it has the data selected. Okay, and I can move that graph or chart wherever I like. I can cut and paste it. So I could right click, cut, and then maybe come down here, right click and paste and put it where I want it. I can manually, oops, I didn't want to do that. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. 
I can manually move it if I like. And I can also take a look at when I have my chart selected, I get a chart design and chart format tabs. If I click on the chart design, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different options that we can use. And one of them is to move the chart. And if I move the chart, I can actually put it in a new sheet. And we'll be doing that in just a few minutes. If I come to the format, you can see, of course, there's all sorts of different types of format we could do. We can actually size our chart so I could make it, say, maybe bigger, make it uh, taller, make it wider. So I can do that manually, or I can actually drag the little handles on the chart. You know, drag them in, pull them out. There you go, drag it in, pull it out. And you can see as you drag, you know, you have some width. If you want finer control, though, you should go to your format and pick these different values. And I'm just going to undo all that so it goes back to where it was with the same size. <clears throat> Make sure it's the same size. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So before we actually start making some of these different charts here, let's take a look at our job outlook column chart. And this is just a chart I have created that identifies some of the different chart elements on our graphs. So first off, if I click off the chart, you can see that there's no handles around it. And if I sort of hover over this area here, you know, sort of that outer, looks like outer margin type of thing, it tells you that that's the chart area. And when I click on it, you can see that it has the handles have come up. And now I have that selected. If I double click on it, a format chart, <clears throat> chart area task pane opens. Okay, and then we have different options for fill and border, some special effects, and then for the size and the properties. Okay, and that would be for the format chart area. And if I want to get rid of that task pane for formatting, I can just use the X. If I hover over this area here, you can see that this is the plot area. And if I click on that, Okay, hang on, just a little bit different with the Mac here. So give me a second. Let me just escape. There we go. When I click on the plot area, see now I have both the chart area handles and the plot area handles. And if I double click on the plot area, now my plot area formatting task pane opens. And again, I have fill and I have some special effects. Notice, however, that there's fewer icons for the plot area than there was for the chart area. And also notice that as I clicked over to the chart area, the task pane updated. Okay. And again, I'm just going to close that for sizing right now. We have some other areas that we need to be aware of. Here's our chart title. Here's our vertical value axis title. And down here, we have our come down. Oops, come down. We have our, sorry, still getting used to this Mac. There's our horizontal category access title. Now these titles are text fields. So if I click on one and I come say into the formula bar, I can change this and say maybe let's just call it count of jobs. And press enter and my title has changed. I'm going to undo that just so I keep the same one. I can go to my home tab and I can change the, you know, take the, the bold away if I want, bring the bold back. I can change the font, font color I want. I can change the font size if I want, just like I would normally do. And I'll just put that back to our black. And again, notice how in Mac, when we hover over the different um, color items, you know, the names come up. So here's a red, there's dark red, there's purple, and then, you know, all the different ones that we can pick. Okay. You can do the same thing. I'll deselect that now. If I come over to the vertical value axis title, now it's called a value axis title because we have numbers on the scale here. And I could change the formatting for that also. So if I select it, and let's maybe make that bold. And then say for the horizontal, now this is called a category axis title because we have categories of jobs along the bottom here. Again, I can select it and let's maybe make that bold. Something else you might notice too for any of these texts, 
uh, text boxes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the top one, the chart title again, and I'm going to double click right in the actual title. And you can see that number has been highlighted. I can click again, and you can see my cursor is right in the text box, and I can navigate to the left and the right and add or delete things as I want. <clears throat> Other things for the axes, if I click on one of the titles here, so now I have the horizontal category axis selected. And again, if I double click it, I get the format axis options. And I'm just gonna collapse this for a minute. You can see we have all sorts of different formatting here, our fill in line, our special effects, our alignment, and our different access options. And we have access options here. One of the ones we're going to look at later on is categories in reverse order. We can also take a look at tick marks and say that, well, what kind of tick marks do we want? Where do we want them to be? And then we have different labels. We can, you know, distance from the access. Usually, you know, we leave these as default. And if it happens to be a number, we could do some number formatting. If we click on text options, notice how you get again, like your home tab a little bit. We have text fill, we have text outline. Again, I would recommend as far as this goes, stick with your home tab if you wanna change them. So if I come to the home tab and I have my um, horizontal category access selected, so we'll just have it selected, I'm on my home tab and let's change it just so that we can see something different. Let's change it to red. So, you know, we have full function up here on our home tab as far as formatting text. So you might want to do that instead of going through the format access text pane. Okay. Um, a few other options here. Let's take a look at the vertical value axis. So again, clicking it selects it, double clicking it opens up the task pane. You can see how we have the uh, value access currently goes from 0 to 140, but it's not really 0 to 140 because these numbers each are being multiplied by 10,000. Okay, if I come here and I have my format access with the access open options window opened, if I come down here and here we have display units, see what happens when I click on no display units. See now we have from 0 to 1.4 million. If I bring back those display units, and again I'll use the uh, 10,000 one, see we have the 140, and now we have the display units label. Now this is just a little feature, it seems to be a little bit of a quirk. If you are going to be using display units, please make sure you're selecting show display units label on the chart, because if you don't show it, somebody's not going to be able to read your graph correctly. Okay, so just make sure sometimes I find that this selects and deselects seems seemingly at a whim at times. So just make sure that if you are picking display units, which you will have to do for one of your assignments, that you're ensuring that this is also selected that the units are displaying on the actual graph. Now that's an important feature because we have here the axis title, we have here the vertical value access, but then we also have this little extra label. It's the vertical value access display units label. Okay, so again, just getting familiar with some of the different names. We also have here a possible legend if we wanted. Now this particular data is only from one series of data. We don't have clustered bars here, so it doesn't really make sense to have a legend, but <clears throat> if we wanted to, we would have it. I'm gonna get rid of my task pane again. Now inside the actual plot area, you can see that we have grid lines. So if I click on one of the grid lines, they're all selected, double clicking on it, and now we have all of them. And we can format them in whichever way we want. Maybe we want to make a sort of a bit of a dashed line instead. So let's make a long dash so you can see how you can change it. You could change the color, you could put arrows on it, you could even put special effects if you like. <clears throat> also in the <clears throat> also in the plot area, so I'm going to just deselect that. We have our data series or our series, and this is the point for software developers. And we're given 
the actual value for what it reply what it uh, refers to. Now, please notice that you see the data label on top it says 126, because that scale is matching our vertical value axis scale. The real number is 1.256 or 1,256,200. So recognize that if you do a display units, it's going to impact how your data labels are shown. Now, if I click on one of the actual columns, you can see that I have handles now around all my columns. If I click again on the whatever column, say I, I just want to select one, now you can see there's handles only on that one. And if I double click on that, again, we have the format the data point. And maybe for whatever reason, maybe I want to not change the border. Let's look at the fill. Let's change the solid fill. And let's, yeah, let's put it at, at this sort of bright red. So you can see now this has been highlighted. I'm going to now select my data <clears throat> labels. Same as the columns. When I select one of them, all of them are selected. If I click on that one again, only one is selected and format data label. And I have some different options here for fill and border, special effects, size alignment, etc. And then some different label options. Now with the label options, we could maybe do some different values here. We'll take a look at that. Let me look at pie charts. We can change the position of it, put it in the center, inside end, inside base outside end, and we have some different sort of formatting features here. <clears throat> so we've taken a, a quick look at what we call the chart elements. Now with my chart selected, if I'm in the chart design tab, you'll see on the far left hand side here we have add chart element. And if I click the drop down arrow, you can see how we can add axes, primary, horizontal, and vertical. They're both chosen. And if I click on the more, the chart, the task pane opens. I'll come back to that, add chart element. There's our chart title, we could have none. Again, if we click on more, we'll get the um, task pane open. For my data labels, this is an interesting feature. Um, it actually has a, an additional option as far as, you know, where to put it. So we could put the center again. I can bring it back. Data labels, pick one of the other ones. And let's go uh, outside end, put it back. But then also let's come back to data labels and put data callout. Okay. And the callout gives this little sort of symbol. Now, say, for example, I'm going to undo that for now. Oop. Not redo, undo. <laughs> so I'm going to undo. <clears throat> say I wanted to have a call out just on that particular label. Again, select the label, select it again. So I have one selection box around it. Come here, data labels, data call out. Now the call out is only for that one bar. Okay, so a couple of different things you can do. And you can see here my uh, my legend has changed. I was clicking something down here and it updated the legend. If I didn't want the legend, I could come here to the legend and say none. And it goes away. I'm going to bring it back just to legend. Oh, well, we can put it on the right, the top, the left, or the bottom. I'm going to keep it on the left where it was before. Oops, no, I meant on the right. <laughs> on the right, there it is. Okay, just so it stays the same. Uh, what else was I going to show you on this? Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look also here uh, for the grid lines. Now we currently only have the primary major horizontal. You can see the check mark beside it. But if I wanted the primary minor horizontal, I could select that. And now we have lines in between. I can come here again, go to grid lines, and I could put the major vertical on it. So now I have vertical lines. Okay. And if I want to get rid of these, let's go to the grid lines, let's go to grid line options. So the task pane opens. So we can see there's the line that's for the style of the line. Here's the uh, side effects or sorry, special effects. Um, notice though that we don't have an option for what type of grid lines to put on or not put on. So even if I collapse that, there's no other option. So I'd have to come here to my 
grid lines and deselect my major vertical so they're gone. Come back, grid lines, deselect my minor horizontal so those are gone. Okay, so just be aware that, you know, with a Mac, um, most of the stuff is, is all there. You just have to maybe look for it in slightly different ways. Okay. All right, so that's a, a brief overview of the different chart elements. And again, you need your chart selected. You need to be on the chart design tab. And we have the add chart elements. Now, for some reason, it's not selecting things here. So, okay, so select your chart. I guess I'm clicking my mouse a little too fast. So select your chart chart design, and then your window shows up. And we'll be looking at some of these different options as we make some graphs. Let's go back to our data and let's actually try to make this column chart. So I'm going to highlight my data and I'm going to highlight from A5 to B12. And I'm gonna go insert and it's a column chart and I'm just gonna have a 2D column chart. And notice how I have the 2D column chart selected. Now it's very plain and we'll take a look at how to change that in a minute. But one thing I might notice before I start doing anything is that, oh, well, my heading of the top title is, has been included, but that's not really a data point. I can fix that by going over to my data <coughs> and dragging down so that it's deselected. So notice now how job title is not a category anymore. So all I did was that's what it was originally job title showed up as a category and I can just grab that little box drag it down and now I've deselected it. Now it's usually good practice to put your chart on a separate sheet so we're going to move our chart so again our chart is selected we're in the chart design option plate ribbon and we click on move chart and we're just going to select in a new sheet and we're just going to call it column chart. And as soon as we hit enter, notice this was our data set, job outlook HOE, our column chart was put right in front of it. And now we have a very basic chart to be working with and to try to um, format how we'd like. So first thing we should notice is that this is very plain, very grayscale. We do have some options to you know, improve the visibility or the, the look of our chart. We can pick our different chart styles here. So again, chart is selected, chart design, and these are the styles along. And as we hover over them, we're given the actual number. So if I wanted to change it here, it's currently at chart style one. I could say, well, you know what? I think I'm going to go to chart style two. And I don't like that one. So I'm going to go back to chart style one. So that's an option that you could pick your style. If I wanted to make it a little bit more colorful, I could come here to my change colors. And right now it's on a colorful palette and the name of the palette is colorful palette one, but it is very dull. I could go to the next one, pick that one. Well, it didn't really change anything. Let's maybe try another one. Let's click that one. Oh, and it changed the bars to yellow, the columns to yellow. Notice in changing the columns to yellow though, it also changed the styles to match that color. Say, for example, if I came down here and went to the next one, well, now we're at pink and let's maybe do a monochromatic one. Let's pick, say, the blue one here. And again, that's monochromatic palette five. So there's a blue one. So usually it's good practice before you do any custom formatting. You really should pick your either your uh, workbook theme or your color theme or your style before you start doing customization. The reason you do that is that if, say, for example, I come back here to my column chart, you can see here I had some customization here, right? If I pick a different chart style, that customization is now gone. I'll go undo. If I pick a different chart color and let's maybe pick this amber one so monochromatic palette too again my customization is gone so you don't want to spend time doing a whole bunch of customization and then change your color or style because you'll lose all that custom work you did okay so just keep that in mind as a best practice 
Now we can see here we've got our chart title. We don't have our axes showing. So let's maybe come up to our chart elements under our chart design ribbon. And we can say, I want both these axes. So I want my titles, though the axes are there, but I want the actual titles. So primary horizontal, there's a horizontal one. I can come up here and now just name it job title. I can come back to my element, say the title, I want the primary vertical, it shows up, I can come up here and I can change it to number of jobs. Let's do a few other things. Um, let's maybe change the font of these. So there's my number of jobs, I'll go to my home tab, and I'm going to make it bold and make it 12 font to try and increase the visibility, the readability of my graph. And again, we'll do the same thing for the horizontal axes, bold and top and 12 font. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Let's again say maybe we want to highlight this particular data point. So we'll select our bar, select our column again, double click it. Now we have our options. I'll come over here to that little fill. Let's put a solid fill in it. And I don't want ugly red this time around because it clashes with the blue. So let's maybe make it, let's maybe make it dark green. Okay, maybe not the best color, but just to show you how you can change it. Let's do the same thing then. Let's leave our task pane open because we'll most likely need it again. Let's do some things with the data labels and let's maybe pick this data label and we want to pick it again. So I sing, I select all the labels and I select this one again to open it up. We have our label options and text options here. Now this is where, <clears throat> you know, as I mentioned before, we don't have a, what do you call it, call out as a list here for label position. So I could come over here to my add chart element data labels, and let's put a call out for this one. Now, <coughs> excuse me, once I have it selected, you can see how in the call out, it has the category name there. And if I don't want the name in the task pane, I can just deselect it, and now I'm back to the number. And again, if I wanted to highlight that a little bit, I could go to my home tab, maybe make that 12 font, and maybe make that bold, just to try and make it highlighted a little bit so you can see how it sort of pops for the viewer. Let's take a look at um, doing some maybe customization to the chart area. So I'll click on the chart area. My chart area task pane opens. Remember if I double click on it and we're going to put say let's put a texture fill on this and we're not going to pick that one. We're going to pick a different one. Let's pick maybe this what is it? Blue tissue paper. Yeah, let's pick the blue tissue paper one. And you can see now we have this sort of light blue tissue paper around it. I say, okay, well, that's nice, but I'd like my plot area to pop a little bit better. So I'm going to click on my plot area now. And oh, there's my plot area. And let's maybe use a gradient fill for that. And the gradient fill, let's come to our presets and let's maybe use this one, which is light gradient accent five. So we'll pick it. And now you can see how the chart area is like the background has this blue tissue paper and the plot area has this gradient. Gradient meaning it's lighter on one side and darker on the other. So, you know, maybe I, I, I like that for my graph. Let's take a look at the vertical axis value. So we'll select it. My task pane opens. Let's change the bounds. Let's maybe say, okay, you know, Excel, does a good job of sizing my columns within my plot area. Maybe I want my columns to go a little bit higher. So I'm going to change this maximum bound here. I'm going to get rid of the four and make it 1.3 exponent six. So that's 1.3 times 10 to the six. And when I hit enter, you can see how now the top value is 1.3 million and my bar goes almost to the top. Now I'm just going to click on the reset arrow because I sort of like how Excel did it to start with. I could change the minimum if I wanted to. I can change the major units and the minor units. Currently the major units are 200,000. I could change that to 250. Press enter and now you can see we're going 250, 500, 750, etc.
And again, if I don't like that, I can have Excel go back to reset it to what it thinks are the best values. We could um, <clears throat> change the scale if we wanted to. We could put our values in reverse order. Let's see what happens if we select that. So values in reverse order. Well, it sort of makes it now like a hanging chart. Okay, so you, you might like that. You may or may not. But, you know, most people for a chart, column chart, will do just keep the, the regular axis. Okay. Let's take a look at other things we can do here. Let's say for tick marks. Now our major tick marks are at these larger values here, right associated to the grid line. So let's go major type and let's go outside and it's hard to see. So let's maybe blow it up here and we can see how the major ones go outside. You can just see it in pale gray, okay? For the minor type, again, we could say, let's pick crosses for those. And again, now you can see them, they've crossed over the outside and the inside. So it's crossing the vertical axis. Okay, so just a couple of different little minor things you could do there. Let's come back to our <clears throat> 100 here. Let's take a look back again at our axis options and let's look at our display units. And this is where, watch what also happens to the column numbers as I change these numbers. So if I change it to the thousands, see how now we have the thousands, the display units automatically came up, so that's good. Somebody knows how to read these, but then also somebody knows or will need to recognize that the column number also has to be multiplied by a thousand, by thousands, yeah. Let's take that away for a minute. Let's put it to none. And let's close the format axis. And let's come over here to the chart design ribbon. And let's go add chart element. And for the axes, let's take away the primary vertical. Okay, so when I take away that primary vertical, I keep the title because I had the title selected, but notice now that I don't really need that vertical axis because I have the values right above each of my columns. So that's an option that you may or may not find useful at some point. I'm going to bring them back. So my axes, primary vertical, and now we're back. And I'm going to pick this again to open up my axis options task pane. I'll come here, I'll change it to 10,000. And then we can see, see how this time the display units didn't automatically come. So I'm going to make sure that I select it. As with a lot of things in Excel, sometimes you just have to slow yourself down, take a look at what you've done, make sure that all the different little things that you want are selected or not selected. And yes, it can be challenging because every different element maybe has a different number of icons across the top here that we can choose. But then also within each of those icons, there's little drop downs that again, have options that we can choose. Okay, so just, you know, slow yourself down, um, take some time, and you should be okay. Let's go back to our data set. And let's try and do the bar chart. So again, if I select the bar chart, you can see here is my data that was selected. So let's go ahead. And let's select our data again. Insert. We're going to go to the column charts here, but this time around, we're going to say a 2D bar chart. And again, I'm going to move it to its own sheet. So move chart, new sheet, and let's just call this bar chart. And notice again that the new sheet gets put in front of where my data was. Now I'm not going to do as much formatting on this one. I'll maybe change the um, the grid lines here. So I have my chart selected. I'm going to add my chart elements. I'm going to go grid lines and I'm going to go primary minor and we'll go minor vertical. Okay, just to, oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's get rid of that grid lines, primary minor vertical. We want the vertical. Yeah, then we, that's what is, it is what I wanted. Grid lines. 
for my major vertical. Nope. <laughs> this is one of the frustrating things that I find with the um, with the Mac um, in PCs, you have this little sort of when you select a, um, a chart, you get these three little buttons on the right hand side that bring these menu brings these chart element menus to you a little more quickly. Unfortunately, Mac doesn't have that. So we maybe stumble a little bit more. So I don't want the vertical. So let's get rid of those. I'm trying to get the minor horizontal. So we've got the minor horizontal here. So no, that's not what I want. So let's get rid of the minor horizontal. Let's come here. Oh, this, I think I finally figured out what I wanted. I want the minor vertical there. That's the ones I wanted. <clears throat> to try to be able to read the, the bars a little bit better, okay? Now, in this case here, I would definitely be selecting my bars and adding my data labels. So again, I can just select my chart bring my data labels and like can put them on the outside end. Now somebody doesn't have to worry about reading the actual values down here. Now I do want to show you something here. So let's make sure the whole graph shows. If we choose our vertical category axis, double click it. Remember we had seen under axis options, categories in reverse order. Now notice first, the network system administrators are at the top. And if I click it, the categories in reverse order, well, now they're at the bottom. But notice something else. Before I selected it, so there they are at the top again, and my value axis is along the bottom. When I do the categories in reverse order, well, yes, now it's at the bottom, the network system administrators, but now my numerical or value axis is along the top. Okay, so just recognize that sometimes these things do switch around a little bit. Okay, so let's just deselect that so it stays the same. Let's move on again now to, let me get rid of the task pane, to the pie chart. So the pie chart, again, you can see how it's selected. It also has that job title category that I really shouldn't have. So again, I could alter it by dragging that down. Alternatively, I'm going to bring it back up. If we have our chart selected and we go into our chart design tab, we have a select data icon. We can pick the select data icon and we can see here, oh, I didn't really want row five. I wanted row six. So I can delete that, put in six, go OK. And now that's another way you can select and deselect data. So let's go ahead, select our data and let's create a pie chart. So insert pie chart, 2D pie chart. We'll put that in its own sheet. We'll move the chart, select new sheet, sheet, and we'll go pie chart. Oops, but we'll spell it right. And we're in our own <coughs> sheet again. Now, when I go to the add chart elements here, you'll notice that many of them are grayed out because pie charts don't have axis labels. They just have the pie, they have the title, they have the data labels if we want it, and it has the legend. Let's take a look at the legend first, and let's put the legend on the right. So it moves over here to the right. Let's move the red legend to the top. Now it's up top. Let's move the legend to the left. And then we can put it back on the bottom. I think I'll leave it on the left for right now. Now, one of the problems with legends with pie charts is that they're very tiny as far as the little squares that are used here to line up with the different pieces of the pie. If I hover over the different pieces of the pie, I can see what they are. So this gray one is the computer network architects, and that matches up to this first one here. The next one is the software developers, and then the info security etc. But if it's difficult for us to read, it most likely will be difficult for our users to read. So one of the common options with pie charts is to have no legend. Okay, makes the pie a little bit bigger. But now in order to make it readable, what we should be actually adding are data labels. And we'll go outside end. And let's double click our data labels, data labels 
So our task pane opens. We can see that we currently have under the label options, this last little sort of bar area. We have the value showing. We have a leader line. There's really no leader line, but we can also put category name. So now I have the name and the value. If I wanted to put a percentage, because again, with pie charts, we typically very often like to compare percentages, we can add the percent. We can put the best fit on it if we like, or we can keep it where we had it before, the outside end. I'm going to collapse the label options for a minute. I'm going to go into the numbers. Now I could come here and pick a category. So sorry, I meant to bring it up here. I could make it a number and I could say, let's keep it at two decimal places. But notice when I did that, what happened? Well, it didn't impact the number, but it did impact the percentage. So this is something that if you are going to be putting percentages in addition to the number, so remember value and percentage we had select, make sure you just leave it as general so that you don't change the formatting. If you change the formatting for one, you're changing it for all of them. Okay, what else can we do with pie charts? So let's pick this computer program piece of our pie. So I selected it and I've got all the pieces selected. You can see handles around each of them. I select it again. Now I only have the one piece. Now I'm just going to deselect that, deselect it. I'm going to double click my pie. All of them are selected, format data series. I'll click that one piece again, format data point. So again, watch out, slow yourself down, notice the different names. Now see what happens, I can drag that piece of the pie, I can't move it up or down, but I can drag it in and out. And I might want to drag it out to highlight it in some way. When we drag it out, that is called a point explosion in Excel. And we can, you know, alter the percentage by just manually moving it. Or I can come here and pick an actual percentage that I like, and maybe 25% is what I prefer. So now I close my task pane, you can see that now that piece of the pie is highlighted. And just like with our other charts, we can select all the labels, select one of the labels, and we're going to come to our chart design, add chart element, data label, and maybe we want to put a call out on that. Okay. And when I do the call out, notice how I've lost now the actual number. So this is again, you know, different little quirks of Excel, doing one thing gives you something maybe you want, altering it to something else, maybe changes and takes away what you had wanted to keep. That's why you want to keep your little favorite button, undo, bring it back to where it was before. Okay, let's go over to this sheet now, the pie sheet. And we have a small data set here, and it has a series of uh, um, numbers of the different fruits that were sold in the first quarter of the year, January, February, March. And maybe I'd like a pie chart for all of these together. So I select all my data. I come up to insert. I go pie chart and I pick my 2D pie chart. And what it does is that it's only picking the January results. It's not picking all of them. And notice how with my chart selected, you can see what has actually been selected. So that's not what we want to do. So let's undo it. And let's pick just the fruit and the January. Let's go back to insert pie chart, 2D pie chart. And again, now we can see that's just our January data. And I'll drag it down here. <coughs> Let's do the same thing now, but for the February data. So let's select the fruit. Let's hit our command button on our Mac and select the February and the numbers. So remember, we have to do that command in order to select non-adjacent cells. Insert, pie chart, pie chart. And now we have the February. Let's try and do the March, but I'm going to do something different this time around. I'm going to highlight just the fruit names, command, and then the March. And now I'm going to go insert pie chart, 
2D pie chart. And notice how it didn't quite work out the same way. Okay, so I have this selected, but it looks like there's no graph there. So just delete it. So let's delete that graph. Let's say, okay, well, what did I do for the previous ones? Oh, I highlighted B4 to B8, then I went Command E4 to E8. And I can go Insert, and I can go Pie Chart and Pie, and now I get the month as the chart title. So just be aware that, you know, um, when you're doing charts, a lot of Excel, even outside of charts, is basically trial and error playing. Does something work? Try it out. If it works out, great. If it's not, okay, how else can I do it? How, what other way can I look at this to get my desired result? So if we wanted this different series of pie charts to be created, we'd have to do them each individually. Now there is an option, not for a pie chart, but if I select all my data again from B4 to E8, and I go insert and pick recommended charts, well, look how now it's giving me a clustered column chart. So let's pick that one. Let's cut it. So right click, cut. I'm going to come up to G1 and go right click, paste. So there's my graph. I'm going to, with my chart selected, go to my format tab. And I'm going to make it a little narrower, so not quite as high. And I'm going to make it a little wider. So let's go to say six inches. <clears throat> and we can see now that we have clusters of months or clusters of fruit, I should say, for the different months. So this is my legend down here. See, I'm hovering over it. It says legend. And these are my data points. Now, if I click on my chart again and I go to my chart design tab, if I click on my select data icon, and I just bring it over to the side here so we can see. So we have the chart data range. It's in the pie spreadsheet. That's why it has pie here. If the data selected was B4 to E8, okay, <clears throat> so that was what was selected. The legend entries are January, February, March. The Y values are the C5 to C8. So here's the values for January. If I click on February, it converts over to D5 to D8. March, now we have E5 to E8. We do have this switch row and switch column option. And look what happens when I switch row and switch column. Now, instead of the, um, and I have to go OK in order for it to update on the graph. So I'll come back to the select data window just so we can see them together. Now, instead of the years, the months that were here, now the legend is the apples and the oranges, pears and plums, so the different fruits. Okay, so this switching rows and columns, this is one way to do it with our select data. We're just going to cancel out of that for now. But there's also a switch row, switch column. And you can use the word switch, you can use the word swap. So swap or switch the rows and columns. So notice I've got my legends or the fruit, but when I hit switch row and column, now the legend is the month. So that's a nice option to do clustered column. We could have done a clustered bar, but I chose the clustered column to nicely group our data. Okay, so that's what we're going to finish with today. Actually, I'm going to do one last thing, and then uh, that'll finish this lesson for today, and then I'll make another one for the balance of the charts. Now, with charts, when we right-click it, as with all Excel, anytime we right-click something, we get a sub-menu, and an important feature on the sub-menu for a chart is the Edit Alt Text. So if I click on Edit Alt Text, it opens up the Alt Text task pane. And it just says, well, how would you describe this object and its context to someone who is blind? So if this particular chart, that uh, clustered column chart, was being included in a report, and the report is going to be distributed to somebody who's visually impaired, then we have to have some description in it. Now, if it's just a decorative item, we could put mark as decorative, and then we don't have to put in a description. But if it's not decorative, we could say, okay, this or the clustered column chart displays the, ah, dis, 
displays the number oops, number of fruits, number of each type of fruits. sold or in January, February and March and include the period. Okay. And if I close that task pane, I might think, well, is it still there or not? I can right click, edit alt text and everything I entered is still there. There's no requirement to put enter. Um, as far as your assignments go, don't hit enter, because if you hit enter while you're in the alt, alt text window, it's adding another line, and the MyLab system will mark that as incorrect, because it didn't say add another line. It's just come back to it and finish at the period, close the task pane. All right, so that's it for this part of the lesson.